I want to understand the school's methodology or process for past practice because I was told that entitlement for faculty is a past practice. How do we change that? I'm, my concern is there are a lot of people that are interested in the incentive and is it true that should the faculty not take it, nobody gets it? And is it true if the faculty decides they're not going to say no because they're not being guaranteed a class in the fall, that <coughs> nobody is going to get to benefit from this? So I'd like those questions answered. And how do you change a past practice? Okay. It's not written down, apparently. Amen. Sounds like a set of actual questions for someone like me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did I ask that same question on comments? And then they don't have to answer. Certainly, yeah. Thank First you. of all, I represent some guys who are working very hard, Dr. Rocha, to reduce that or to increase the amount of money you have to work with. <laughs> my, my name is Bob Owens and I teach health and athletics at Pasadena City College. And here, real quickly, anybody that wants to answer can answer. And my first question was related to the, how do we know that we're going to get any classes along those lines? And my department is, it's, it's critical. Depends on which side of the bed you got up on that morning. Verification, this is a question that I've asked three times and I only ask it because I don't want to be told no at the end. I have accumulated a, 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 a substantial amount of sick leave from my overload and from my sessions and I've been told that it will apply towards those uh, classes after retirement that are part time. Um, and we have some issues with hourly rate about what our hourly rate will be when we uh, when we're teaching part-time after. Uh, my next one is, I would prefer to take the present value of the money rather than the five-year um, payout or annuity. And I would be willing, actually willing to pay the interest rate if, the, in fact, the interest rate is what the uh, annuitor is, is telling us it is, which is, I think, 4%. Um, the other thing that I would suggest that I have to to uh, Mr. Marheim, is that we look at the idea we're, we're, we're willing to take and move, move uh, our, our cost to the retirement. And I think that that's a good move. But I would also suggest we take a look at the one year of, of uh, service credit that the STIRS has at least some time in the past that they would accept. That would then transfer an additional incentive for people to retire and it would give us one more year of service credits for those that aren't, aren't maxed out. Then the last one, of course, is how, many, how much raises do we get over the three years that that contract is good for if we don't retire? Nobody. Anybody negotiate that one yet? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for, thank you for your uh, attention. And for those who don't know me, my name is Lyle Engel. I, I come from Maloney College, and the entire college is about the size of the representation here. Some, some of you I don't know, and I wish I had a chance to meet you. Um, my time here is limited, so if I don't get a chance to say hello and uh, greet you, maybe this will suffice. Then, uh, Glenna, yes. uh, you're, you're talking, I assume, about what Roger referred to as uh, right to work, that is, we've had a past practice here apparently, as I understand it, of faculty who uh, leave, they uh, have uh, first shot at being hired as an adjunct, is that what you're saying? Okay, so what we have, uh, what we have been saying in the context of this early retirement incentive, first, if you're going to consider the early retirement incentive, please do so without um, the idea that you're going to be rehired. We've said that consistently. Uh, that's as much an economic question uh, for individuals who participate as anything. We certainly do not want to be in a place where we're offering an incentive and, and then there's a, uh, a notion that uh, they're going to be rehired and you're counting on that money to make this work. So we'd like, like to separate those two. Now having said that, if the retirements meet what we early our early projections indicate, uh, we could have as many as perhaps 70, 60 or 70, this is my own numbers, it could be higher, it could be lower. 60 or 70 employees leave, half of whom could be faculty. There will be 
seems to me, uh, opportunities for hiring adjuncts to replace the departing full-time faculty. And to the extent that those positions are filled, I think we would first look at departing full-time faculty uh, to, uh, to fill those positions. I think that's fair to say we, we want to do that. But that's not a guarantee. And I think that's what we've been trying to say that, that on the one hand, take this plan without the guarantee of being rehired, but certainly there will be some rehire, so and that's yeah. not what was said in negotiations. I was there. Well, I, I you know, I, maybe this has evolved a bit. I, I, uh, I don't know, but certainly this is, are they? Well, what I'm saying is the answer to this, our position is, I think, as I just, just described it. Go ahead, please, Andy. I'm sorry. Yes. Where we were all sitting, where we said this would be a deal breaker, we refused to present this to our retiring faculty and then change your position. I don't think it's acceptable or appropriate. And we were all there, and I know you to be a man of character. And I remember Roger saying specifically this is a deal breaker. We will not present this to our faculty unless they can come back and teach. As a psychology faculty, let me tell you, it's very hard for somebody to leave a place they've been for 40 years without the understanding that they can come back. They don't need to be here forever, but psychologically, they need that attachment. Jay made that point. I remember that discussion in negotiations. We were there. Yes, well, I, would, I was... Uh, could, I, could I piggyback on that, Please, Miles? please. At least three times during negotiation, I asked the same two questions. One was, if the administration did not accept the package on May 10th or whenever it is, that we would be back to full-time status, and they said yes. The second one was, would we be able to come back each semester and teach one or two classes for a short period of time because there are many, many discipline areas that we teach in that cannot be easily filled by a part-timer, nor can you easily take the existing faculty and add to their loads. So you would be doing the, the uh, school a disservice by bringing in a part-timer that is not prepared to teach these special discipline classes. And that was our, our point. And everybody accepted that point. They pretended like it would be just fine. And now you are rewriting the history of the contract negotiations. That's exactly right. That it's is not wrong. fair to us who negotiated in good faith. We were there every time trying to understand what was being said, and we were answering you there, and we were getting these answers in agreement, and now we're not. So we don't even know at this point whether the word is good that if uh, we put on our, our papers for, for retirement, that suddenly on May 10th, we're gonna say you have to retire anyway, even if we don't accept the, even if you don't accept the golden handshake. You see the violation of trust that we're experiencing. And this is not just us, this is all the faculty, but it also has to do with a lot of our discipline areas that need to have those particular classes filled. And that's why people come back for a year or two, fill those classes, while the new group of faculty is working their way up to teach those classes. Well, I, of course, was at the negotiations with, for the most part, I just think uh, one, one negotiation. I recall early in the discussions uh, comments about uh, faculty coming back. However, and I want to be clear about this, from my own perspective, we did not reach an agreement about moving. Now, I let you talk. I, I hope you'll allow me to do this. I'm, I'm telling you from my perspective. I do not recall, nor do I believe it is the case, that we reached an agreement that there would be rehire rights for faculty who participated in the uh, early retirement. I simply, that's the way I see it. In fact, I have been consistent in speaking subsequent to the negotiations about what I thought was the outcome. And it's just as I described it a few months ago with, with uh, 
uh, a little bit of a variation to it. I think I said that nobody would be hired. Uh, and so the variation is that there would be hires, but don't count on it. That's a, that's a different message. Now, others were on the district team. Dr. Dave is here. I talked to Bruce Varsic this morning and, and last night on this uh, very subject. Bruce Varsic is the district's chief negotiator. He has the same recollection. Uh, Dr. Dave can speak for himself. But, but I, and I have no reason to stand here and say it differently. I, I'm not uh, under anybody's influence with regard to this. So I, I, I don't know what else to, to say to you. Dave, you were there. What did you hear? <laughs> Do I have to speak in the microphone? Um, my understanding is that faculty can be rehired, just like we have rehired retired faculty in past previous years. Um, I, you know, I had retired faculty who retired last year, which I rehired this year to teach as adjunct faculty, for a lot of the reasons that Jane outlined. It, it makes sense in a lot of cases. Are faculty entitled to be rehired that retire? I don't think that was ever said at the bargaining table. But are they, do they have the ability to come back and join the adjunct pool and be part of the adjunct faculty and be considered for hiring? Absolutely. So is that a change from past practice? Not in my book. They might have a question. Yeah. I'm retiring so that you can give my salary to a lesser salaried person. I'm at the highest end of the part-time, so for, it stands the reason that why would you hire me back when you can get a part-time guy for less money? Well, I don't base my hiring well, decisions on that, economics. But, but it is in the contract. I base it on putting the best faculty okay. member in front of the students. Which is exactly the point we brought up in I just, I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually shocked <laughs> as the lead negotiator that ever since, Lyle, we've been discussing this issue, ever since, before Dr. Rocha was here, we've been fighting for this early retirement, every single conversation, that was a component. I'm shocked. <laughs> Clear about this past practices. So, if I had retired last year, I would be guaranteed a spot. You're saying no, you wouldn't have been guaranteed a spot, right? So, so this isn't a change from previous no. years. There's no language in the new version of the or the tentative agreement or the old contract which says retirees are guaranteed rehirement. It's nothing has changed. Is there anything about priorities? Not for adjunct faculty hiring. Once you retire, you become adjunct faculty. And that's at the pleasure of the dean. But they have seniority, is my understanding. They always have. So no. Is that in the contract? No. No. Julie, is that in the contract? Good. You want to be full time? Stay be full time? Thank you, Carl. Um, I'm going to have to agree with my colleagues. We did discuss this at length, and we did make very clear that many of our faculty who retire still have an interest in their expertise and their special skill, and they want to practice it simply at a lesser level, fewer classes. Um, we spoke yesterday, Mark, about this, actually, coincidentally, outside C building for about 45 minutes, and um, I think I'm going to ask you that we're going to have to go, I would like to go back to the negotiating table and address this issue specifically. Are you open to doing that? Well, first of all, you know, as I made clear yesterday, um, the it's first... A, it's basically it's a yes or no answer. Um, as I made clear yesterday, okay, <laughs> the first time that I heard of this issue was yesterday in, the, in your email, okay? You never informed me directly. You never told, I was never well, informed. You did inform your team directly on numerous occasions. That's correct. But I think that uh, the team, what I'm trying to say, Roger, okay, is I'm perfectly willing, okay, to uh, 
take this back to the Board of Trustees, but this is a new issue at the negotiating table. It was never brought to me or the Board as this is a deal breaker, okay? Lai was there, Dave was there, Bruce Barsick was there. Never once, and we, we were in closed session every other week for four months, okay? Did anyone ever come to the Board or to the Superintendent President and said, we have work to do, we're not there yet, okay? Now I'm hearing loud and clear what some of you are saying you would want to have in the contract. I have no problem with that. But I know on January 19th when I walked into the room for the first time after four months, because I walked in at the beginning and said hi, and I left. Uh, and every week, Dave, good guy that he is, Lyle, good guy that he is, would go into that negotiating session and come out. So, now, uh, and not once during that time, and when I came in on January 19th, you signed and I signed a tentative with, agreement. With all what respect, all Lyle this is, is a collegial is, issue, it's a humanities issue, you're from the humanities, I'm from the humanities, this is the right thing to do and you know it. So we can equivocate, we can equivocate about was it written down or not written down and so forth. It's understood, you're new to this campus. People in this room represent hundreds of years of Pasadena teaching. Okay. And the past practice is that people can come back and teach upon their retirement. Roger, really and we just have to have that. Or this whole arrangement Roger, has I a very bad turn to it. That. If you want me to carry that back to the board, I will well, be perhaps, So you're agreeing that we should I have some be, kind of discussion before you go to the board. That would be my pleasure. I, and I, team. I hear you guys loud and clear. It's okay. So, but, but we um, need to take care of this so that our retirees can go forward with a, a clear mind and they're comfortable and they can retire knowing that they would have the right to come back and work. And we have sticky notes. <laughs> and a lot of people in the room who are not all going to get to voice their thoughts. So I really do want to urge you, silly though it may be, get your uh, perspective down. It will be helpful. It will be helpful to the prospect. Okay? Can Write I down. Also, can I also say I and then we specifically, since then, have been asking for the contract language so that we can agree to that and sign it. We have several times called uh, the attorney um, and HR asking for the specific language of the early retirement. And the only thing to date, as of today, that we have received is the PARS booklet. We want the contract language. We got an email. We got an email from Barsock on Friday saying it's going to take three weeks to get the contract language. Where is it? It's been since January 19th. Yeah, I have an email from Bruce to you and your attorneys. It says the contract language is the tentative agreement, and everything else in the current contract That's stays the stays the same. Okay. Um, now Bruce isn't here. Okay, and. We'd be glad to have, we obviously are going to, now what I'm hearing is that the contract that <coughs> we negotiated, the tentative agreement that we negotiated is not, you know, is not what we want. I'm, I'm hearing that loud and clear, but I know what uh, the contract that we negotiated, and we'll have to go back into the room if this is a, uh, if this, as you say, is a, uh, is a deal breaker. About it. It, it, it's a very simple thing. It doesn't have to be an enormous legality. It's a very simple, humane thing to do for our senior faculty who've dedicated decades of their life to this college. Well, I, That's it. I'll leave it there, Roger. But I think that I would rely upon uh, Dave and Lyle to report uh, what occurred at the table. And I think that but Dave and Lyle will tell you that we This is the main thing to do. Yeah, I, I have a question. I don't, if, if it was finalized, then how, how can you finalize a contract that the, that the board has the, the ability to reject at the end? In the language, it says the board can decide at the end that they don't want this. Yeah. You know, I think there's an answer. And yeah, that, that particular provision deals with the early retirement. Then. Some yes. of the provisions in the, in the uh, 
tentative agreement uh, are funded as a result through this early retirement plan. If the early retirement plan does not go forward, then those funds are not available and various provisions are then withdrawn. So that, that's, a, that's a contractual matter and that's consistent with the way contracts are often negotiated. So there's nothing uh, untoward there. But I'd like to come back to your questions, Coach. Okay. Uh, you, you asked several questions, yes. one, of, one of which was uh, you wanted the present value of yes. as I recall. Um, now, the, the way this early retirement is set up is it's, of course, 75% of base salary. Uh, it is not a cash incentive. Uh, this 75% is used to purchase an annuity through a, a life insurance company. Uh, the district <coughs> pays the, the annuity over five years. The life insurance company makes its profit based on the rate of return that it gets from putting uh, these uh, premiums into uh, an account to reinvest it. If we were to simply give a cash sum at this point, that would that would obviously not be an annuity, and the uh, potential for savings to the district would. Uh, would go away. So it's a, it's a, it, that's a very different model altogether from what we're talking about. 